Brownie really is its own reward, but we can still do you one better. One of the most common questions we see is how to calculate this rewards TAPY using entirely on-chain data. See, it's not forward-looking. You cannot expect to see this going forward. It's always going to be fluctuating. This is simply a snapshot of what it looked like historically, but you'd like to know how these change in real time so you could perhaps build your application and know if yurt or MIM is going to continue yielding better than USDP or yours. Fortunately, it's so easy to build this. I think I can even live code this. I'm going to call it reward native.py. Get everything we need from Brownie and from the scripts, helpers, utils. We're going to pull in the coin price from last time. This looks up CoinGecko and pulls an asset price. This is useful to convert, for example, curve DAO token price into US dollars. We'll run this on the trusty three pool. If you haven't looked at unit 16, in which we fill out some aliases, there's a script in there that's going to allow us to look up all these contracts after we've set the alias. So go find that script and run it. This means we can just call three pool by three pool. We can get its rewards gauge, we can get the curve DAO token and the gauge controller, all set to this dictionary called contracts. So we can pull these all loaded contracts in line. So the biggest thing we need from off chain is the price of the curve DAO token, since all rewards are given as curve. We also need the inflation rate of curve, which is contained within the curve contract as the rate function but it's stored in 18 decimal places. And finally, we need the relative weight to round out the numerator. Every week, Curve users, particularly the VECRV stakers, are going to vote on which pool should get the most rewards. The gauge relative weight says what percent of the rewards flow to any given pool. And all you need to do is pass again the pool rewards and divide by 10 to the 18th. The numerator is set. The denominator will contain the working supply. In 18 decimal places. Asset price, we're going to pull that from CoinGecko. In most cases, this will be zero, but for the Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink pools, we'll fill that function in a second. Virtual price represents the inflation due to trading fees of the underlying LP token value. As always, 18 decimal places. And this is all we need to plug and play into the formula. So the numerator is curve price times the inflation rate times the relative weight times magic number one, two, six, one, four, four, zero, zero. We divide by the working supply, asset price, and virtual price. And if you want to convert it to percentage, you can multiply by 100. Finally, calculating the asset price, just for pools that aren't dollar pools, we'll use the curve registry, which tells us the pool asset type. This will be zero if it's unrecognized or a dollar pool, most pools, one for Ethereum, two for Bitcoin, three for Chainlink. And if you find other asset types, you can just fill out the rest of this array. The asset type is greater than zero, aka not a dollar pool. We'll make the API call to get the asset types price from CoinGecko. Otherwise, it's a value of one. So let's take a look at our reward native calculation. We're looking at three pool, which as of a refresh here, 
should give us a value. A typo. Should give us a value of 2.77%. As mentioned, these are always fluctuating, so maybe some slight variation, but we get 2.77% exactly. How about that Bitcoin? Let's take a look at the PBTC pool, which should give us 4.32% as well as 1.36% rewards in P&T. And exactly 4.32%. Couldn't help to do much better. A couple of quick notes. Try crypto doesn't work with this method. Also, there's not an asset type for euros. So if you want to calculate the euro value, you're going to need to come up with a custom conversion rate. Other than that, have at it. We look forward to seeing what you're going to build now that you can calculate curve rewards entirely from on-chain data.